Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, if you watched our previous episode, uh, you'll know that we were working on um, setting up, you know, our virtual our virtual network. T today we're going to be diving into um, our first virtual server, um, and we're going to be working on our DHCP and DNS roles. Now, DHCP and DNS kind of need to be set up at the same time, so this episode might be a little longer than normal, and I apologize for that. But again, I'll try and breeze through it for you. So let's get started. All you need to know here is that I have already created a server virtual machine, which you kn already knew how to do um, from our first episode, installing a server. We have it literally set up the same exact way as our host. So let's get started here and boot up our router. So we have internet, so we'll just right click on it and hit start. And while that's starting up, let's go ahead and connect and start up our server. Once our server logs in, um, we'll start, we'll, we'll make sure it has the internet first to make sure that our router is functioning the way it should be, as it should. All right, nothing yet. So let's double double check our settings here. Make sure it's not set to static or something right off the bat. Nope. Make sure our, uh, oh, there we go. It just took it a second, whoops. Okay, cool. So first off, I'm going to install Chrome um, because the server OS comes with IE that's like very, very, very locked down. And um, while this is doing that, well, after this is finished installing, I'll, uh, I'll show you that. Take a look here. As you can see, if we use recommended settings, it doesn't matter if you don't use recommended settings. Um, you get the option, don't uh, turn on protected mode or leave it off, but it doesn't matter because that's only for local intranet zones. But it's basically pretty much impossible to, na impossible to navigate anywhere. Uh, without manually adding it. Um, you get this pop-up, it's very annoying. It's incredibly secure and very good, but it's kind of a pain. So we install Chrome, and uh, usually I would, you know, install some, some uh, add-ons to help protect me a little bit better here. Okay, so while that is doing this, let's exit out here and check our internet really quick. So, what we need to see is where are we getting all our info? It should be our router, right? Yep, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1. So, default gateway, DNS, and DHCP are all from our router. So, to start off, what we need to do is we need to make a quick differentiation. DNS and DHCP are services that are offered by a router. They don't have much to do with routing specifically in the way, and what I mean by that is that they, uh, they just kind of tag your machine, right? Your router is still going to be routing. It doesn't matter if a different device on your network is giving your computer an IP address or giving your computer a DNS address. Um, the router is still going to be doing the routing if your machine is trying to go to the internet right so with that said if we're going to be making windows server our dns and dhcp server which is recommended and i actually think required by microsoft at least as best practice for active directory and things like that uh, we're going to want those services on windows so first let's actually disable those on our router and to do that, we're just going to go right over to our IP 1.1. And we're going to log into OpenSense. All right. And we're going to go down here to Services. We're going to go to DHCP v4 LAN, because that's where the addresses are being handed out at. And we're going to uncheck this box, enable DHCP server on LAN interface. Sorry, don't want that. Save. And next, we're going to go to unbound DNS. Enable DNS resolver. 
we're going to disable that as well. All right. Now remember what I said, when you're changing certain things like this, depending on the router operating system or distribution, you're going to want to restart it. I think in this case, these are automatically applied and those services are restarted in OpenSense by themselves. But I'm just going to go ahead and reboot the router anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. And basically what this is going to do is since we don't have a DHCP or DNS server on the network, if I clear the settings of this network adapter, then I'm going to lose internet access is what's going to happen. So when the router comes back up, I'm going to clear our settings and make sure that we don't have the internet, which sounds counterintuitive, but I think most, if not all of the roles on Windows Server when you install them are actually just packages that are extracted and installed on the machine. I uh, don't think it necessarily needs internet connectivity. If it does, it's only for a few of them. All right, so this should be finished here in just a second. All right, perfect. And we don't have internet. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. First, we are going to open Server Manager. And after this finishes loading, remember we need to let this finish, we need to let this uh, finish loading in order to be able to use add and remove uh, roles or else we get, um, features rather, or else we get an error. All right, we're gonna go through our list. Yep, this server, and I want DHCP add features all right validation problems the validation process found problems with the server in which you are trying to install no static IP address were found on this computer that's fine for now we'll fix that in a moment and DNS it's probably gonna give us the same error yep and we'll go ahead and allow that anyway and next next we don't need anything in there and next next Go ahead and install. I don't think these services require a restart of the server, so I'm not going to bother telling it to do it automatically. <clears throat> what do we got going on for internet here? Oh, my old settings. That's okay. We'll fin let this finish installing, and then we can actually probably release our IP, and it and we're going to lose the net view. So, if we do IP config release, all right. Now we don't. Now we definitely do not have internet. And if we were to do renew, it's probably going to take a really long time and eventually fail. So we'll renew just to make sure we're not getting anything from our router. And while that's thinking about it, we'll look back at our installation progress, which is done. So close. And just as I figured this is pretty much taking forever, which means that's not finding the info, we don't need to wait for this to time out we can easily just go down here and take a look at our actual adapter. Status, no network access, details, probably ARPA, yep, 169. So we have no internet connectivity. Now, let's start by configuring DHCP. That way we can get IP addresses. So we'll go to tools now because they're installed features and we'll go to DHCP. And here we go, DHCP server. Let's, new scope, we wanna click on IPv4 and do a new scope. And this will bring us to the wizard where we can configure the kind of network that we'd like to distribute. So we'll hit next. And then the name for this scope, we'll call this one main scope because it is possible for you to route 
different um, address ranges. And we'll say that this is our main IP range. Start address. Okay, so the start address, I'm actually not going to start at dot two, and you definitely don't want to start it at dot one. Um, I'm going to start it a little higher up because I want the first block, like the first couple um, IPs, reserved. I don't want the DHCP to hand out those addresses to devices because I might want to use them for networking equipment, such as this server. So we'll start it a little higher. We'll start it at, say, uh, dot 21, which leaves me up to dot 20 that won't get issued to anything. 168.1.21. The end IP address will just be the standard for this kind of network. So we'll do 192.168.1.254. All of this should be automatically filled for you, and this all looks right. So let's hit next. And then this is add exclusions or delays. And we don't really need to mess with any of that, so we'll just skip past this and hit next. And the next is the least duration. The least duration is how long an IP address sticks to a device that talked to the network before the router reissues it. If you have a lot of devices on your network, this could be problematic if it's set to a long time. By default, we should probably just set it to 24 hours, which means that every 24 hours, the router will reissue it an IP address to any device that's connected to the network. Um, and that frees up the ones that were once reserved by devices that are no longer connected. That way you don't run out of IPs to give anybody. So again, the default is seven. We'll change it to one and hit next. And do you want to configure the DHCP scope and options now? And we'll hit, yeah, that's fine. Router or default gateway. And we're going to want to set this to our router. Um, so we'll do 192.168.1.1, and we'll hit Add, and then we'll hit Next, because we only have one. The parent domain or DNS servers, let's see. OK, so <clears throat> we're going to make this um, the actual server itself, what we plan to make this server. I plan to make this server um, 1.5, so we're actually going to put this in this field. So we'll say that the DNS server for this network is going to be 192.168.1.5, because that's what we're going to make this server, this virtual machine. And we're going to hit add. Now it's going to fail to add it because it's not set up yet. We, don't, we haven't configured DNS, but that's okay. It's still going to let us add it. So we'll just let it figure it out, and this could take a little bit until it finally times out and tells us you know, that it can't find it. And then it's going to ask us if we want to add it anyway. So we're going to hit yes, and then just hit next. And finally, win servers. Do we have any win servers on the network? No, this is a DNS network. We don't need wins, so we're going to skip past this as well. And do you want to activate this scope? Yep, I sure do. And finish. Perfect. We have an active scope. And if we go into the scope, we can actually see a couple of different options. We won't dive too far into them right now, but one of the cool, cooler parts is going to be address leases. If we double click on address leases here, there's nobody in here right now, but that's fine. We'll get to that in a second. So now that that's done, let's set up DNS. And before we actually do that, let's try and set our static IP now for a virtual machine. So for our virtual machine, we'll go to properties, IPv4 properties, and we're going to set it manually. And I've already showed you how to do this in another video, so I won't go into every step, but we'll, what'd we say? 1.5192.168.1.5. Subnet mastered autofill. Default gateway is going to be 192.168.1.1. In preferred DNS server, we're going to point it to itself, but we're not going to use the loopback address. We're going to use 192.168.1.5 because we're going to be setting up a DNS server and it's going to be hosted on itself. Now we'll hit OK to commit those changes. Uh, this is complaining about a previous adapter that I had installed and removed. That's fine. Hit OK anyway. 
Yep, all looks good. And now if we go to our status, it should say that. Yep, DNS server is itself, gateway is the router, and its IP is obviously its IP. Perfect, now let's set up DNS. Okay, so for the DNS server, we are going to right click on it, server DC1, and hit configure a DNS server. And it's going to guide us through its wizard. We're going to select create a forward lookup zone. Um, and you're gonna want that because there's no zones defined. So think of it almost like a DHCP scope. You're gonna want a zone. So we'll create our first zone. Actually, create forward and reverse lookup zones. That's my bad. We'll create both. You want both kind of zones, so we'll hit next. Create a forward lookup zone now recommended, yes. We're gonna say it's the primary zone. In our zone name, you can make it a URL. I wouldn't make it a real URL. Um, you know, I'd make it something like, uh, you know, just something that you use internally on like your network maybe. So we'll call this one like zone.tdelab.com, which isn't real. Create a new file, yep, that's fine. Do not allow dynamic updates. Uh, for something like this, this is okay. Uh, generally, you would allow only secure updates if you're connected to Active Directory, and we'll do, we'll do all of that later. So we'll hit next. And yes, create a reverse lookup zone now. And that's going to be the primary zone for the reverse. Yep, IPv4. And now we enter our um, network ID, which is basically our IP address minus the last octet. So in this case, it'll be 192.168.1 with nothing else. And then we'll hit next. Hey, I wanna create this, is that okay? Yep, that's fine. All right, now we are going to check, should this DNS server forward queries? And that basically means if I wanna access google.com, which is an IP address that is not inside my network, should I then ask this list where that is? And the answer is yes, you do, or else nothing will be able to leave your network. You'll only be able to communicate with things inside your network, and we don't want that. So we will allow that, and we're going to say, we'll do Google 8888, and then we'll do quad nine, 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 nine. And those are validating. Might take it a second. Sure, all right, so next, it's gonna search for root hints. Perfect. We're complete. Let's hit finish. All right, awesome. We have our reverse and forward lookup zones and you can see our server is in them already. That's cool. All right. So now that we have that set up, let's Renew and flush DNS IP config flush DNS. All right, so we have the internet now. Perfect. That was pretty simple. So, now that we have shut off DNS and DHCP on the router, and we've enabled it on Windows, um, our server, now let's see if our Windows 10 OS, our Windows 10 VM, picks up DNS and DHCP from the server, which we want, we, we, want, we want it to. 
Remember, our server is 1.5, so when this gets the internet, if we check the network adapter, those are the, those are the IP addresses that it should be pulling. It should get both DHCP and DNS from our uh, Windows server. So we'll just quick log into it here. And we already have the internet, as we can see. So let's check out to see uh, where it's getting all that info. Good. DHCP and DNS is 1.5. Perfect. Now that everything's routing through there, we can do a speed test really quick just to see. You know, I know that you guys are curious about it. I didn't really let anything have time to load, so that's my bad. But still, if it's close, it's good. The ping's a little high, but it was loading things. I'm really not, probably not going to try again here because it, it really isn't going to matter. Great, we're getting our, uh, the download speed that we're supposed to, so that's good. Our upload speed's getting up there, that's also good. I don't even know who I'm like asking right now. Rapid Systems is a different place than yesterday. We'll just go ahead and do it again. I just want to make sure. Uh, high velocity, sure. They're a data center right up the street, actually. I actually toured that facility. It was really nice. Uh, this is a better response time for sure. That ping is definitely like in line with what I was uh, realistically expecting here. Good. All right. So this is doing well. We can go ahead and exit that. Perfect. Now, if we actually go back to our server here, show you something cool, we can actually see all of these um, addresses and leases now. So if we were to go to server manager and we open up DHCP, we'll actually be able to see the IP of that machine. If we go to scope, we go to address leases, you'll see this desktop is 101. And if we go back to our desktop here, we can check the IP of it. And it's 101. And likewise, I think that also shows up in DNS as well. If we go to our DNS, we should see that that machine is attempting to make requests. Nope, not yet. That's fine. All right. So we've configured our router to disable DHCP and DNS. Um, and then we installed DHCP and DNS on the Windows Server and then enabled DHCP and DNS on Windows Server and then tested to make sure that our machines could access DHCP and DNS. And on top of that, we set a static IP, which we should for both of these actions. It's kind of a prerequisite. You remember during the install, it complained about it. So we set our static IP for this machine and we made sure that the DNS pointed to itself, which is important. Um, now that that is all set, you know how to install DNS and DHCP on Windows Server and get it functioning. And now you have the foundation for a lot of the other um, Microsoft, you know, tools is uh, like Pixie and Active Directory, things like that are going to require um, and definitely, you know, be more integrated and work better with the uh, Windows DHCP and DNS. Um, I will leave links as to some of the more complicated terminology that you can run into, but I'll be covering them later because this does this does fall under the scope of the home lab stuff. So we'll be dive doing deep deeper dives into DHCP and DNS at a later date. Um, pretty much the only thing that you need to make sure of now is we are going to go back and tune DHCP and DNS before we leave for today. So. To do that, let's go into DHCP first. 
and we're going to make sure we're going to update our statistics every 10 minutes this will allow us to read log files failover filters advanced we don't need to touch any of that good good this is only yep perfect okay so DHCP I just want you to click on IPv4 and go to properties and just enable automatic update statistics that just makes it a little easier to troubleshoot um, and now we're going to open DNS and we're going to go to properties and we just want to make sure that our DNS server is configured correctly. So our forwarders 888 and 999 are resolving. We want to check the box use root hints if no forwarders are available. And what a root hint is, is you can click this list and actually see them. Oops. No, you can't, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, use root hints if no forwarders are available. That's important. Basically, what it's referencing here are the Internet's root DNS servers. Um, you, I think, I don't know if it's bad practice, but I'm, I think it's frowned upon to link directly to root DNS servers. And the reason being is I think, when, as far as the root DNS servers are concerned, um, only some of them have all, all of the like they're, they're segregated, like they're split up. I'll have to double check that, I don't know offhand. The next is going to be advanced. Um, we want to enable automatic scavenging of stale records. And we're going to change this from the default of seven days to one day. And then we're going to hit apply. Good. And then these are the root hints. This is what I was talking about. You can see A, B, C, D, all the root hints. Monitoring, you can enable this if you'd like. This is just like a simple test. You don't need to really set this up unless you are already having a problem with DNS and you need to, you know, further look into what the problem might be and troubleshoot. Um, same with event logging. I just leave it to all events because it's going to help you. And then debug logging. This is a more specific uh, kind of logging where you can actually set like search uh, parameters and things like that uh, That isn't something you need to dive into right now. Like I said, we're just doing a basic setup All right, so now that we've been through all the tabs, just make sure that you hit ok All right, and we just want to double check and make uh, right click again on our primary server and hit set aging and scavenging for all zones again This should be one day And it isn't so we're going to hit scavenge stale resource records just so it does it right now. And then we're going to set both of these to one day for no refresh and refresh interval. And then we're going to hit OK. Then we're going to hit apply all these to an existing Active Directory integrated zone. We're on standalone DNS and not using an Active Directory integrated zone, but you can go ahead and check it anyway. It's not going to hurt anything and hit OK. Perfect. Now we're all set up. It's set at one day. And now the last thing that you might want to do with both DHCP and DNS is just right click on the server itself, go to all tasks, and then restart just to make sure that it's properly taking our changes. And it will tell you. So DNS is done. Let's open DHCP and do the same thing. We'll just right click on our server, go to all tasks and hit restart. This one might take a little bit. You'll see it's shut down in the background and then it'll start back up. And now you see how both of those are down, both IPv4 and IPv6 are down right now. If you give it a second, these should start right back up. There you go. Perfect. Status active for main IP range. Good. All right, so that actually ended up being a lot shorter than I expected. 
Um, again, you know, we covered a lot of ground, even though, you know, it seems like I just kind of like rushed through it in, in all actuality, you're probably just getting good at it. Uh, there isn't a lot to configure as far as DHCP and DNS are concerned, only that what you can configure or have to configure does get done. If you don't, you're going to run into a lot of problems, but otherwise, as long as DHCP and DNS are set up correctly and the router isn't handing it out, then your Windows environment is going to, is going to very, is very much going to thrive. Um, so now that we've got both of those done, we'll call it quits for today. I uh, hope that uh, you know you gained something from it and I helped you out. Uh, have a good one.